Um, but yeah, I think, I think we're where we want to be. Let's go ahead and look at our results folder. So here's our results. Let me take you through all of the things that I typically do. Uh, I've already kind of done a sanity check in the, um, in the results, uh, the solver plot uh, that I was doing. Uh, but I want to constantly be looking for a sanity check and I want to constantly be looking for insight into what's happening in my study. First thing I almost always do is a cut plot, right? Click insert cut plot and move my, you know, enter my, my plane around, right? Until it's in a reasonable location. Right around in there is probably a good place. Um, if you want a preview, you can hit this little eyeball you can kind of move it in and out and you can see what that looks like and get a preview plot. This one looks funny because I'm looking at pressure and atmospheric pressure is all I'm getting. Let's look at the temperature instead. So that's looking good. There's my temperature plot. That's basically what I was looking at previously. I'm going to click OK though because notice I can't see the solid temperatures because there's solids in the way. So let's do this. Let's go up to display, transparency, and we'll set it to 50%. Um, other things you could do, you could do like a section view, you could just hide certain components, whatever you want. Transparency tends to do a fairly good job unless your appearances have been applied manually to some of your components, in which case uh, some of those, like these actually, uh, may not you know, do what you want it to do. So let's go ahead and just hide everything in our electrical components and in our cabinet. And that'll make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. All right, so there is, oh, let's, let's hide our lids too. So there is our plot, again, just like we saw it in our preview. Um, a couple things I'd like to do on this one. Uh, I may want to come in here and edit this and add a mesh overlay to the temperature plot. So if I do a mesh overlay and we'll do a hit preview, you'll see that we're getting pretty good resolution in the areas of interest. One thing you don't want to see is an area that's got like a really big element. Like this isn't even all that big, but imagine there was an element that was just huge right here uh, and there was a lot going on there. That would be a bad combination, right? We've got a lot going on here, uh, but we have a decent resolution. At least for right now, we have a decent resolution. Um, I'm not too concerned about this because we kind of looked at this ahead of time, but if the results are looking really crazy in a certain area, you can refine it. I'll actually talk about solution adaptive refinement next. That's an option in the solver that says, hey, look how crazy it is in this certain area, right? It uses certain parameters to decide, yeah, there's a lot going on there. We should zoom in and it'll actually refine the mesh in those areas in the middle of the solution. Uh, really, really awesome uh, option if you need it. All right, let's turn off the mesh. Let's turn on streamlines just for a second because you can come in here and really start to look at these vortexes. And these streamlines are GPU accelerated. So you can zoom in and constantly they'll just kind of change density for you to try to keep them spaced out. Here you've got entities that are just really, really thick. That's because you got a lot of overlapping lines. I'll show you how to deal with that when we look at flow trajectories. But really, this, this looks good. The temperature feels like it's pretty good. I'm leaving it at a fairly low number because when you go really high number, it almost, like it, it gives you a different view entirely. Right? And this is actually a pretty good view here. See these blue areas? That's pretty interesting to look at. But what I want to do is click OK because I want to start looking at the plot minimums and maximums.